What's up, artists? So last class, we should have started painting our boxes. Here I have mine. I have one side painted black and one side painted white. White would be for daytime and black would be for nighttime. This allows me to have a primed base for the paint to actually stick to in a more efficient way. So I chose to do a nighttime scene for this demonstration, so I'm working on the side that is painted black. Here I just began mapping out my simple landforms for my landscape. Remember, there's three main parts to a landscape. Foreground, middle ground, background. Foreground being the furthest part from, or foreground being the closest part to us, middle ground being in the middle, and background being the furthest point from us. And as you can see, these landforms are pretty simple, nothing extravagant right now, just some hills and some mountains. Yours should be as simple as possible too, because in the end, we're gonna cut these out. Now I'm drawing on my box right now just to get a simple sketch for my idea. Now I'm gonna transfer that idea onto railroad board. Just redrawing my initial idea using pencil, Railroad board is similar to cardboard. It's a little thinner, a little bit more flexible. But as you can see, still just drawing the simple landforms. And they don't have to be perfect because it's a landscape. So foreground, middle ground, and background. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my railroad board with the drawings on it, a pair of scissors, and I'm gonna cut out each section of the landscape. So foreground, middle ground, background. Each landmass is like a puzzle piece. It's going to fit onto the box in a very specific way. Now, why, you might ask me, why am I cutting them out? What purpose would it serve? Why couldn't I just have painted it on the box? Well, we're gonna turn this into a relief sculpture. A relief sculpture is a flat sculpture that comes slightly off of its body. So something that would be a relief could be something along the lines of a plaque or something that's engraved in a wall where it has a flat back, but it has a raised front. So again, cutting out each individual piece these pieces are the puzzle pieces to our whole project. So it's important that you don't lose them. We should write our names on each piece. And if we don't get them glued on today, we will get them, we'll store them in our boxes before we lose them. So again, this is like railroad, or this railroad board is like cardboard. So it is important to be super safe with the scissors and to turn your railroad board as you cut rather than trying to turn the scissors. It makes it a lot easier. Now that I have each one of my puzzle pieces, I kind of flip them around, see what works best, what I like the most, and just kind of lay it out on my box. This is just kind of like a physical sketch rather than drawing it out. I'm kind of piecing the parts together to make sense of it all. And as you can see, it kind of is starting to take, take shape and form. Now, after I figure out a, land, or a form that I like, the next thing I do is I am going to prime the pieces of the railroad board just like we primed our box with either black or white to allow ourselves a clean base to paint on. Because if we were to just paint, if we painted yellow on this railroad board right now, it would not work at all. Because a tint on a tint just makes it darker. We want our colors to really show through in the most efficient way possible. So after I figure out the design that I want, the next step would be to prime my railroad board with a white paint. I also went through and I mapped out where my foreground is, where my middle ground is, and where my background pieces are as well. And then I just go through and I painted my pieces white. Now that my foreground, my middle ground, and my background are all painted white, the next part is going to be to start painting my nighttime sky because the sky is the furthest point back in our landscape. It does take a part of the background along with our mountains, but the next part would be to paint that sky. You can go as far down as you want. It's a good idea to go pretty far down, at least halfway down on the box because remember you're working with cutout pieces that might have some little holes that peek through and you want the sky to show through, not the black box. But I went with a nighttime sky and I decided just to use some pretty impression impressionistic paint strokes. Not really painting the sky flat, but kind of wet blending light blues, purples, and dark blues together to create a mystical type of nighttime sky. Somewhere in between dusk and nighttime. And as you can see, it's not really taking a lot of thought. I'm just kind of putting the paint down in little splotches all throughout the all across the top of the box and downwards. And because it's nighttime later on, I can go in and add some stars. But I really want to make sure I'm getting that dark blue nighttimey effect with a little bit of light clouds popping through because it's dusk, duskish time frame. I really just like this blue color. 
So keep painting it. Your paint can be a little bit different. You might want to do swirls. You might want to do a flat blue sky or dark blue sky, some sort of flat color, maybe with some painted dark clouds on top. Maybe you're using black and white to create a gray, something along those lines. But because it is nighttime, I did want to put stars on it. And here you can see I'm just kind of flicking the top of my paintbrush that has, was dipped in white to create some splattered effects. This gives it the look of shooting stars or just some different type of textures. The next thing now is I'm going to paint my land masses. So each, each section of the puzzle pieces or the land masses should be a different, different in some way. I went with a kind of a purpley blue color scheme for all of them so they have some sort of unity, but you could really make every single piece a different color. I like the unity of it because it makes them all look cohesive, but maybe if you used a bunch of different colors, that would be your own color scheme. But here you can see I'm wet blending some purples and some blues together, really filling up each section though. Adding blacks to make it darker, adding white to make it lighter, and some light blue to make it lighter, just give it some variation. I really like the dark blues and the light blues together, and I like how it gives it a kind of nighttime-y effect rather than just a flat color. These colors don't have to be realistic. They don't have to represent the real world. You can use your imagination because eventually we are going to go in with some patterns and textures and everything else along those lines. Kind of like the abstract sculpture or the abstract landscape we had been working on the past couple days. So if you notice that last piece in the bottom left has some texture in it with the variance of colors. What I'm doing is called wet blending. So I'm not rinsing my paintbrush. I'm just dipping it into different colors and mixing them. Now, after my piece was dry, I went in with some yellow and just created some polka dots on some pieces, give it some texture, and then on some I went on with some lines, like our abstract landscape. Maybe you go in with some straight lines, some swirls, maybe different patterns. It's up to you. How do you want your landscape to look? I like a really abstract look because sometimes I find realism boring, although impressive, but this represents my personality very well. Remember, your art is always a reflection of you. So now that all my land masses are painted, I go through and I kind of start piecing them together on top of my box. Then I start making little sandwiches out of cut up pieces of cardboard. I stack them up on top of each other, usually no more than five pieces. The background should be the tallest or that should be the shortest part of your stacks because it is the furthest point back. As you work towards the front, they will get taller and taller and then you'll glue your land masses on them. This will create that relief or three-dimensional effect. Notice how I'm not using a lot of glue. I'm just kind of putting a dot because dot, dot, not a lot when it comes to glue. And if you use too much glue, it can become a little slippery and the pieces will slide off of each other. But then you lay your piece on top wherever you want it. I already had two pieces down. And now I'm going to start layering my foreground on top of my middle ground and my background. As you can see, I'm layering my sandwiches here. They kind of started sliding because like I said, they can be a little slippery when, before they're dry. And then I glue that on top of each piece. So each piece is getting layered like a sandwich. And then my foreground, my very last piece, should be the tallest piece popping off the paper. You could also go in and add a tree or something along those lines as well. If, it's a, if your tree is in the foreground, remember it is gotta be big because it is the closest part to us. As you move back in the background, it would get smaller. So your pieces of cut out from your scraps would have to get smaller as well. But there it is, that's the final product. I put books on it to let it dry.